first of all, let's introduce myself. I'm the curator for news and moving image uh, here at the library. But I'm going to talk particularly uh, to include represent representing our, our, our newspaper collections. But I'm going to talk particularly about television and radio. <coughs> so, you've heard when Andrew was speaking there about full, the desirability of full text searching. That's we, what we offer for uh, our, our web archives, it's what we offer for, for our. Um, some of our, our, our text-based resources, such as our... Sorry, <coughs> our, our you speak a little louder? <coughs> Sorry. Apologies, I have a bit of a cough. You've heard about our web archives, how we were encouraging full-text search there. We have other resources, such as our newspaper archive, which offer full-text searching. How can we introduce this for other media where you don't automatically think that you have full-text searching, such as TV and radio? They do come with text. It is possible to extract them. We are starting to do this, and we're really looking for people to find interesting ways then to, 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 uh, to work with this, with this material. So our television and radio materials, they are part of our larger news collections. We collect <coughs> newspapers under legal deposit uh, and have a collection of some 60 million titles. We have television news, radio news, and web news. Our television and radio news collections are relatively new. We began recording on a daily basis of our programmes receivable in the UK in May 2010. The collection is now built up to some 50,000 programmes, um, uh, recorded off air uh, from 20 channels. You can see examples. They're all channels which broadcast in the UK either on through Freeview or FreeSat, so BBC, uh, ITV Channel 4 certainly, but also Al Jazeera, Rush Today, CNN. CCTV, China News, it's available on, on FreeSat, and HK Bloomberg, and others. We're taking in approximately 40 hours of television every day and 22 hours of radio. It's a born digital archive. It is meant to be fully automated. It actually requires a lot of hand-holding, like a lot of fully automated systems. <laughs> but it does include the electronic program guide data. So that's the basic broadcast uh, data. It gives you the transmission date. Uh, the, the, the time which it broadcasts, the name of the channel, and a description, which normally is great for most, uh, most, most TV and radio, until you start dealing with news, because they all have exactly the same description. It's the world's latest news. We've got thousands of records all telling exactly the same thing. This is where subtitles come in and start to be of interest. And uh, that's, my, that's my next slide going to look like. So we are capturing the subtitles, but, but now all of UK terrestrial TV plus Sky come with subtitles. Most 24-hour news channels don't. <coughs> so they do in other countries, not in, the, not, not in the UK. So not for CNN, Rush Today, and uh, Al Jazeera and others, but yes, for BBC, ITV, Channel, uh, Channel 4, and, and Sky. So this is the service by which uh, we, we present this data. And I'll, I'll Best if I just go online and show you broadcast news. So this is it, it's running in our re running in our readings. You won't find it on online. We're not able to make it. So, so do write down the URL. But it's a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> We're not allowed un under uh, rights restrictions and agreements with the broadcasters to make the content available outside of our. Our, our, our reading rooms. But if I switch on there, the reason we've got blank ones there is they're, they're, they're still processing. We've taken into today, today's breakfast, uh, which was only finished broadcasting a couple of hours ago, so it's still working on that. So let's go down to News at 10 from a couple of days ago. And this is what the average programme looks like. It's 10 o'clock. The news now on BBC One with Sophie Rayworth. It should start scrolling through the subtitles now. A British soldier murdered on the streets of London. His death could not have been prevented, concludes a parliamentary inquiry. But the report into Fusilier Lee Rigby's death highlights errors made by the security services and a failure to follow up leads. Okay, it's starting to scroll from... through. You can also, so that the entire subtitles are, are, are there. You can then scroll through. So if I look for. Rigby, and click filter. That brings up every mention of where Lee Rigby is mentioned. You can also see the, the, the lines across that the, there. So that's, 
that's an XML uh, record. Subtitles, if you don't know, do not, they're not graphics, they're bitmaps. So you need a process of OCR to be able to, 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 to generate correct text. We've got a system that does that very, very nicely. It's what we then do with it and how to, to, to make uh, things more discoverable, which is where we, where we need help. And if you go to any one of these and then click on that link... But yet it wasn't flagged by the internet company. It takes you to that point in the programme. And just, uh, we also capture keyframes throughout the program, so you can go to any one point and say, well, I'm interested in that section there. Eventually, carry on. So, and so it plays. So that's broadcast news. Where's my slide? There we go. Right. Broadcast news includes television and radio news, but we have a great deal of other radio as well, effectively with a national collection. We don't have all UK radio, but we do have some 200,000 hours from the 1920s to the present day. As well as the uh, radio news that we've been recording on a daily basis, we have 60,000 hours of off-air recordings we've done on tape from uh, 62 onwards, 25 hours of BBC archive and transcription discs. This is uh, discs of radio recordings which are then uh, distributed <coughs> to, to, to other territories. Uh, complete capital radio uh, analog uh, tape archive. And for our interest here, the complete digital archive of Resonance FM. Only about a third of our collection is in digital, radio collections in digital form. And most of that's Resonance, because we've got 10 years of it. Uh, broadcasting 24 hours a day, you can do the maths, it's just how, how, how many programmes there, uh, there, there is. We do have plans greatly to expand radio recording in the future, if they'll give us the money to do so. So it's somewhere where we're really interested to, to start it. how do we start to, to, to deal with uh, uh, radio for, for, uh, as a big data uh, uh, text mining solution. It's like, it'll be like the, the, the web archive. We do end up with a system where we take a lot of UK radio in. There's three million uh, pro programmes broadcast per year in UK radio. And how on earth do you find anything uh, within that? It's not just about... <coughs> well, it's just much the same issues as, as facing the web archive. As with the TV, access to the programmes themselves is on site uh, owing to, to, to copyright restrictions. We don't own any uh, <laughs> intellectual property in these programmes, but with the new copyright exceptions, there are opportunities for doing stuff with the, with the, with the data, especially if we can extract something new from the data and then uh, play with that rather than the, the data itself. But we're interested in, in, in bright ideas. So what have we got available? There's some XML from Broadcast News. So we have UK television uh, news data, 2010. That's electronic program guide data. Some about about 50% of it was subtitles in uh, XML format. We have UK radio news data from 2010 onwards. Uh, the EPG, that's electronic program guide data. We have the Resonance FM Arts Radio collection. Ten years of it. That's the schedule data. <coughs> when they did, they record an entire day's broadcast. And then we, we've done mapping that to, to, to their schedules, which vary hugely. So it's been quite a, quite a big exercise in try, try, trying to map that. And we're still working on, on bits of it, but it, it's building up into, into an interesting and reusable collection. <coughs> we have speech to text files. I so said if we want, want to make uh, TV word searchable, let's capture the subtitles. With radio, it doesn't come with subtitles. But speech to technologies, uh, te technologies have improved hugely over the last couple of years. It's on everybody's phone. It's how you scale that app to, 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 to that. <coughs> But the principle behind it is that we, we want to make radio and TV and everything else in the library uh, word searchable. We did run a project re recently uh, called Opening Up Speech Archives, where we were looking at the potential speech technologies and its value to, to the search. And the main conclusion we got from this is that so many people are waiting for speech to text to be perfect. <laughs> they want to capture every single word uh, exactly. You're never going to get that, and it's not necessary. Named entity extraction, getting the key terms, is more than that, be enough for, for the majority of researchers and lets you start to link up the resource to, to, to other kinds of, kinds of content. It, we have a, a mixture of about 8,000 hours worth of stuff of TV and radio, uh, <coughs> which we've, we've extracted using uh, Microsoft's Mavis uh, system. It's a bunch of content ready to, 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 be, uh, to be used. As said, there are copyright constraints to limit our use of broadcast material to the BL's premises, uh, including the subtitles, a bit of a grey area, because they're there. <coughs> but, but, but 
if we can concentrate on things like entity, entity extraction as a means to work, um, work around this, uh, we think there are ways, exciting ways to work with this material. And in terms of what you know, I'm interested in, what everybody is interested in, but for, for myself, I'm particularly keen to see how television and radio can be linked up to other resources and to how news media link together. So we want people who are looking for a subject and don't have to think about the medium where, where it comes from. It just says, we've got it, we've got this document, we've got this newspaper, we've got this web, web, website. And then it, it's, it's a simple model, but it's incredibly complicated, complicated to, to get there. But, uh, which is why we need people like yourselves just to, to, to tell us some of the <laughs> intelligent, <laughs> intelligent first steps to get towards that, that, that nirvana. Okay, thank you. Thank you.